Okay, so welcome everybody to the channel. Um, after the last fuel burn video, I thought, actually, it, I need to make something that's representative of what we would actually do. So knowing how much I burn an hour is great. Six litres an hour. So let's go and fly a flight for an hour. And see how far I can get. Now on the screen now, you're going to see a screenshot. I've taken it earlier of the route I'm going to fly. And so I'm going to depart overhead and then I'm going to fly exactly that distance. Now it's about 50 miles, uh, I think it's 50 miles, yes, a 50 mile route uh, and see if that matches with an hour and then, uh, but it's going to be in all wind directions today um, because the uh, the wind's from the west so I'm going to head off wind, cross wind, down wind and then back in. So hopefully it will good, uh, give a fairly good representation of the uh, the distance I can cover in an hour. So uh, all the checks have been complete, thorough walk around of the aircraft, loads of fuel on board, more than I need for a one hour. But as I say, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm safe and I've also got diversion options if required. That's the plan for the flight. What I might do, if there's been any questions on the following videos, I'll, uh, I'll drop them in as we go along on the flight. But other than that, it's a lovely evening. It's been blowing this morning, but now it's, uh, it's smoothed off. Uh, and apparently the paraglider guys, hi Richard, hi Paul, um, and they've said it's smooth up top, so let's go for a fly. And hopefully today I shouldn't be cold, which will be nice. Dynamo Traffic Golf, Charlie Mike, Romeo Foxtrot lining up for immediate departure on runway 01 hard. Dynamo. Ooh, it's horrible, boggy, horrible. Ugh. Right then. Temps are all looking good. Bar neutral nose well straight. And there's Richard and Paul. Right, 16.32 on route. There we go. Back on track now. And on the good old hand throttle. Still want a little bit of a cruise climb. So, 6,000, just under 7,000 RPM. There we are, 7,069. EGTs, temp CHT are all looking good. There we go, ground speed about 48, 49, there's 50 miles an hour into wind. I am heavy because I've got practically a full fuel load on, which is about 23 litres. So again, hopefully this will be another real world test of, um, of what the aircraft can do. It's definitely very smooth today. So I'm going to head towards the right of Utoxeter at the moment. Well, hopefully this is um, giving you some useful information, anyone that's interested in the 9, or at least its performance anyway. If you have got any questions, please drop them in the comments. Uh, it's always nice to know the sort of questions people are asking, or thinking at least. Um, and the main point is that I do try and get back to you. I don't think this video is going to be anywhere near as long as the one I did for the fuel burn, because I say you're getting used to what I'm doing now. Um, but in short, what I'm going to be doing is flying this route, is 51 miles. I'm going to see if I can cover that in an hour. We've got varying winds today in all directions. Again, on the route on board now. I'm already halfway to Utoxeter now. Um, and uh, yeah, noting that when I departed, less than five minutes ago I departed. So that's four, uh, 1630. I was overhead. Not sure my head cam can still see this. Where are you, head cam? There we are. Slightly off track, but I'm trying to get myself... I'm trying to keep to the right of it because I want to make sure I've got A, land out fields, and B, uh, I don't want to fly over the town. Just reducing the power again. There we go. What is interesting at the minute as well is my Udi's running, and that will give me a kilometres distance as well for the flight. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to convert that back again. Lovely evening tonight. Afternoon. It feels like evening because of the sun. 
we're getting so used to the sun setting, but now the days are drawing out. This sort of sun used to be around three o'clock and it's now at least 20 to five. Fantastic. Oh, it's already got me to my turn point. Uh, two, three, zero for Leek. And we're off to Leek now. So I'm going to shut the main cameras down now. Mr. Wink Cam is still running, which is nice to see. Um, I have been having issues with the angle for that camera. Uh, and it looks a bit skewed, so I've tried to straighten it on the screen. Which is why you might have noticed some corners missing. But, uh, but yeah, now I've tried a different angle today. And uh, let me know if you like that angle. Yeah, I need to gain some height. So we're gonna be cruise climbing it back up again. turned on uh, but I've done all the rejoin I've all set up for the circuit uh, I'm pretty much going to call this on the downwind leg um, as I've had to modify uh, the circuit or modify my, my, modify my route to make sure I join correctly uh, but at the moment yeah that's pretty much within two minutes of the hour um, and I say what I'll do now is I'll put some details on the screen to show you what the distance covered was, etc. Uh, and that way you'll get a really fair understanding of how far I've travelled uh, coming up in one minute in the hour. So, got around that entire route in under one hour. I'm really quite impressed, actually. Darlingmore traffic, Golf Ramey, Foxtrot, final runway 01, Darlingmore. So hopefully you enjoyed that flight and could see that there were many aspects to this flight, not just flying for an hour and not just flying a distance route. It was a combination of the two. And when you look at the maths of actually flying a triangle, you don't get the advantages of flying into wind and downwind. You don't gain that much more by flying downwind. And so flying the triangle is, is the only way I could actually give a real time uh, a real environmental way of, of understanding what this aircraft can actually do. And so I can build that into when I start planning routes that I know that I can achieve this in a multi-directional or it's gonna, I'm gonna reduce the distance traveled by going into wind, etc. 
but I say the triangle is the best way. I know, appreciate that the top leg was uh, was had a little kink, but it just gave me a nice reference point to uh, to aim at. And so I hope you've enjoyed that video, uh, just to, to show the views, if nothing else, of wonderful Derbyshire. But more so, it was looking at the facts and figures. Now, the RPM was slightly higher than when I was flying um, on my just pootling around the local area and waiting for the time to run out and then come back. I did notice that rather uh, the difference in style of flying from the PB to the 9, the PB will just nicely float around the air and keep it quite slow. The 9 seems to cover a lot of distance and that's what spurred this flight to make me go further. Uh, what did shock me was the fact of that even the first leg, I was autom within minutes automatically over the top of uh, uh, Utoxeter and then all already heading on towards Leak, Leak the top end of uh, Carsington Water and back in. The distance was 51 miles. I know I said in the vi video it was 50. It was 51 miles. And the GPS ground speed was showing 53 miles an hour. Now I spoke to Ben Ashman after this and we worked out that the spot wind for that 2,000 foot was 10 miles an hour. And Ben did some additional calculations and that puts the hands off trim at about 55, I think Ben even said 57 miles an hour. Uh, which is pretty good for this aircraft. The RPM was slightly higher. It was about 6,600 average throughout the flight. Just say there were parts where I needed to send, points where I needed to climb, but I remained roughly around 2,000 feet um, above sea level. And the fuel burn was still around six liters an hour, give or take about 100 mils on the, on the lines on my tank. And I completed it in a smidge around an hour. So that means this machine can actually do some serious distance in comparison to what I've been flying before. I know there's guys that have got the DG 450s and the Delta Jets that are hammering along at 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, this isn't designed to do that. This is the intermediate aircraft, a single seat. I just want to go places, but it means I can actually now travel. I appreciate this is a bit of a long outro. I really hope it's been of useful information for those that are considering this type of flying, this type of aircraft with this engine combination. This video should be going out while I'm at Sun and Fun and I'll be flying a 9 out there with the Cosmos engine. So hopefully when I come back I'll be able to give my thoughts on both the Cosmos and the Polini 303 just to give a bit more of a flavour of what, I th what my thoughts are on, on both different, uh, on different engines. I'm still learning my Polini 303, especially starting technique, etc. Uh, I am getting used to it now, and I am loving the stability of it in the cruise uh, and, and just how it's operating. So other than that, if you've got any questions reference this flight, as I said in the video, if you have got any questions, please drop them in the comments. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I will find out, uh, or I'll investigate if required. Uh, but in addition to that, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, and until next time, everybody, fly safe.